Howdy guys, so today we are uh, doing a really crucial lesson on back transformation. So back transformation. So we've already talked about transforming data. Um, but the key thing is, you know, once we've transformed data, um, usually you won't want to present the transformed data in any kind of uh, presentation of your means, for example, and even your results. So, for example, if we had um, uh, an interest in growth rate comparison between groups A, B, and C um, here, um, typically on the y-axis you wouldn't put um, log of, you know, weight change or something like that. Right? Because your units would be strange. You would have, um, uh, or lo let's say log of weights. Okay, so your units would be, you know, something like five and six and seven or something, which doesn't mean anything in terms of kilograms or milligrams or whatever you're measuring weight in. So you want to be able to express your data in terms of actual masses of these different groups, which are going to be more realistic and more interesting. Now, the problem is, when you do that, you've performed the analysis on the transform data, and then you're wanting to present the back transformed data. But um, you need to be statistically and numerically honest about the, trend, the fact that you did your transformation. And that was done, remember, to um, meet the assumptions of normality of a lot of our tests. And with our transform data, we will have nice symmetrical error bars. But with our back transform data, if you think about it, they can't be symmetrical anymore. We have symmetry around a normalized mean, but not symmetry around a back transform mean. So we would actually expect, if we've done a transformation, but we're presenting back transform data, there to be asymmetrical error bars. So they ought to be asymmetrical. For example, the log transformation, um, we would expect um, a, a skew in the distribution toward Higher, more higher values because we know that the original distribution of residuals was like that. That's why we did the transformation to begin with. Okay, so how do we go about back transforming? Let's get rid of that. Um, so what we do to back transform, well, I think maybe this is an example where we want to use a keep it simple, stupid data set. And so what I'm going to do is just create a scenario, and I'm, I'm really just going to do this for one mean. Uh, let's imagine we have group A, and we found the mean for that group is 2. All right? So we have a nice, simple mean of 2, um, and this is for the transformed data. Okay? So we've, we've done a transformation. Let's say it's a log transformation where we've taken our y variable, and we've taken the natural log of it, and... We've done our statistics on that because we, we have a nice, normally distributed log transformed variable. So we do our ANOVA or whatever on that, but um, we now calculate a mean for that of um, 2. So how do we <clears throat> back transform that mean so that we can present it in, for example, a figure? Well, uh, how did we get the transformation? Well, we just go backwards from that mathematically. So what is the logarithm? The logarithm of a number is the exponent to which we raise the base e. So in order to get y back, we need to raise y prime, make that the exponent of e. All right, so if this is true about our mean, that the mean of group A transformed is 2, then our back transformed mean, in fact, we should even label it that, back transformed, is going to be e to the 2. Okay, so just e to the y bar. 
um, because obviously the relationship um, is going to be the same as for any observation. So what is e squared? e squared is uh, 7.389. And you can get that on any calculator. You should be able to get that on any a uh, decent calculator. Um, so we have our back transform mean, and if we were to actually plot that number on a graph with groups A, B, and C, that would be our mean for that group. Okay, it would be back transformed mean. Okay, and then the units would be actually um, quite useful. We would actually be back with the original units that we measured our y variable with in, which is great. <clears throat> okay, now the trouble comes with um, the back transformation of confidence limits uh, that we put around that mean. So, for example, let's say this is just an example. Let's say, and we keep it simple again, we got a, a standard error of um, 0 0.5 for the transformed data. So, this is in, remember the little prime is indicating transformed, just like the prime here is indicating transformed. Okay, so, um, you know, typically what we would do is we would, um, we would add or subtract the standard error from the mean, uh, and we might do one error bar. If we were doing confidence limits, we would do two error bars. Um, so um, the issue is that we've calculated the standard error on the transform data. So you might just think, okay, well, we'll just take SE and we'll apply this formula over here, um, just like we did with the mean. <clears throat> Don't do it. That's wrong. Why? Because you won't get asymmetrical error bars doing that, right? So what's the way we should be doing it? Okay, so what we need to do is calculate the upper confidence limits and the lower confidence limits for the back for the transformed data and back transform those. Very important. Okay, so I'm giving an example here where I'm showing the confidence limits, not plus or minus one standard error. Um, but you know, the principle is basically, you have done your calculations of the standard error on the transform data, so you need to set those confidence limits in the transformed realm and then back transform those. Okay, so let's see, what do we have here? So we have a lower confidence limit of the transformed mean um, minus t times the transformed standard error, right? And I'm just gonna, again, for, for example, let's say we have a pretty large sample size and um, t equals two. I'm just making the numbers nice and easy here. Keep it simple, stupid, okay? So we have our mean, our transform mean of two minus two times our transform mean of 0 0.5. So that's two minus one or one. Likewise, we calculate our upper confidence limit that's transformed, which is um, the, sorry, this is the mean here, right? The, the transform mean plus T times the transform standard error. And so then we have, again, I'm going to say two just because I'm trying to make the number simple, but you would actually use T, of course, to do this if you had a smaller sample size, for example. Um, you, you then have for this example two plus two times 0.5 or three. Okay, all right, now I can back transform these. How do I do that? I then apply my formula. Um, the upper, or sorry, this is the lower, isn't it? Lower confidence limit back transformed equals E 
to the 1. And the upper confidence limit back transformed equals e to the third. And so e to the third is 20.086. Uh, e to the one is 2.718. And now we have asymmetrical confidence um, intervals around our graph, which is what we should have. So if we have group A here, and let's imagine we're back showing the back transform data now. Um, our back transform mean was what, 7.389. All right, so we have 5, 10, 15, 20, and our units of mass were, I don't know, grams or some such thing, which might be reasonable for this particular organism. Our lower confidence limit is 2.7, so somewhere in here. And our upper confidence limit is 20.086, somewhere in here. And we can see we have these incredibly asymmetric error bars. And we should, because we have transformed these data and we know that um, above and below the mean, we should have asymmetrical observations within uh, that sample distribution. Okay, so um, this is how we should see graphs that have been back transformed. They should be asymmetrical and you get them by back transforming the lower confidence limit, back transformed, the upper confidence limit, back transformed, and by showing the back transformed mean. Okay, very important to do that carefully and well. Um, I can't tell you the number of times I've served on master's and PhD student committees and they've told me they've transformed their data. I look at their graph and I see symmetrical error bars and I call them out on it every single time. Um, and it will happen in your, the review of your publications as well. So very important that you, when you um, transform your data, that you back transform it correctly when you go to present it in the original units. All right, that's it guys.